I'm so excited to be here at the Onassis Foundation to talk to you, even though you must be tired at this point of looking at another screen of somebody telling you what to do, but I will do my best to be gentle as I also speak to you as a citizen, not just as an artist, and I'm a concerned citizen. And art, art happened to be the way I, I express myself and I, I have a relationship with the world. I work at the, as a UN ambassador uh, on climate and I'm, I'm interested in well, how does one feel included in society? And maybe I can talk a little bit about that. I think that we often, for instance, look at the world defined by what can be measured. Let's just think of the history of urban space. We talk about the buildings, the sculptures. We talk about everything we have put into space and what is left when everything is taken, so to speak, with, when, when something is privatized, there's institutions, what is left, we could call that the negative space. What's left is our space. It's our, the public space. That's why it's called the public space. And maybe we should turn that idea around a little bit and say, well, why don't we say that the public space, the negative space, is actually the solid or the interesting or the, this is our space. This is where democracy lives. This is where we share values. Or this is where we are together. This is where we exercise what we believe in. The reason why I say this is important, and besides that, isn't it interesting that also, of course, the Onassis Foundation from Greece, and that essentially with the philosophers of the streets, uh, the, and Socrates and so on, that, that's where it kind of started. But the point is here, it is as if it's harder to talk about what is intangible or what is immaterial or what is not really easy to measure, you know, happiness, solidarity, trust, the belief believing in the future, hope. These are things that are uh, much harder to understand. And I would say that compared to quantifiables, like money and meter and wealth and so on. No, and, and I would like to say that these abstract things, climate, and does it really matter if I do something? What is the future? These things where, where, where we are now facing a situation where we have to articulate and also then apply onto the world things that are so abstract. And that's, I think, a very interesting topic because I know that very often we have situations where people feel disempowered. They feel that, oh my God, well, that doesn't really matter. Can I, I as a person, I as a single person, what can I do? It doesn't matter. Why don't the big companies, why don't the politicians? And yes, I completely agree, they have to do most because they are the biggest, they should. But. It's more also for the sake of society and the overall moving ahead, the believing in the future more than, than just letting go of it. I think this is where art, for instance, have something to contribute with. Making the impossible possible, making the invisible visible, making the sort of no, the notion of out of reach, on the other side of the horizon, accessible and inside the horizon. One example I have worked with is called Ice Watts, where I took glacial pieces of ice from Greenland and I put them on the street somewhere, for instance, in Paris during the COP in, in France. It's very straightforward to touch with your hands and your cheek what the politicians are talking about, to hold hands with the data in a way so you physically have a relationship with it. I think this can be very convincing. I think it can be quite touching, quite literally, and also emotionally. I worked with an app for children, for instance, on, on occasion of the EU, and, 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 and the idea was, how do we listen to each other? How do we listen to children in this case? It was called Earth Speaker. And more importantly, when do we feel heard? And, 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 and of course, there is a great movement with young people overall, and the notion of, well, are we actually listening? Because evidently the future is theirs, being children, having much more time to live in, in the time, uh, in the world than we older ones are, are leaving uh, behind them. I think there are ways for creating a movement, interdependence, so that we all can act together, doing what we can do as a citizen in the world. Now the notion of UN 75 years ago made the human charter, the fundamental human rights charter, right? Maybe if we think about it, maybe they forgot to do rights for plants and species. We are living now in a time where we are reconsidering 
maybe the human excellence, you know, the human sort of, oh, the human everywhere and overall and, and nothing but humans, maybe this is actually a disbalance. Maybe we need to also find out we probably need rights for plants and species, the oceans, the commons, the, the environment. And maybe the success for the humans also, but for everything, lies in the, is the, is the well-thought-through balance between all these elements. I'm interested in, and I have made some works about it recently as an artist, in collaboration with many others, what, is the, what if the... the, the the General Assembly at the UN, what if it was for everyone? It was for all the animals and the environment and for trees. Imagine to sit at the UN and then there was a tree who said what they wanted. Maybe we need to reorganize our value systems on a much more fundamental level. How should I say? Well, this is just beyond, right? It sounds like science fiction. But I'm afraid it's not science fiction. And art is one area where we are trying, I think, to articulate what is unimaginable, to make it imaginable, to make it real. And of course, there's a lot other than artists, and I should not, of course, only talk about myself in theory, in philosophy, in, 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 in literature, in, in many, many fields, not at least in culture. Things are, are happening. And I would like to say they are inclusive. They believe in the relationship of, of thinking and doing and action, activism. There, there is something happening now, and, and please don't underestimate your own potential as a stakeholder in that. Take upon yourself to believe in utopia, believe in the future, make it real. And see, now this is an interesting question. This is an interesting discussion. How do we make what is impossible possible? Because if we look at the way that the world seems to be committing, I mean, the politicians and the big companies and so on and so forth, it is clear that something like the Paris Agreement, where I did the ice watch, it's going to be really hard to meet, to meet the ambition, right? The, the claimed goal of 2030, 2050, so and so much percentage, everybody is talking about, well, we're going to do it all at the last minute. So we might as well so sort of cash in up until now. I don't know if I would... I would bet on that solution. I don't know whether we are going the right way. So here I am with you as an artist. I am, I'm not doing everything right, I can promise you that. But I'm taking my small battles as well as talking like on more abstract occasions like this. I had an exhibition in Japan one year ago and my artworks uh, some of them are, are larger works that they go in, in big crates and they are normally sent then to Japan. And we reconsidered at my studio in Berlin together with the team, but how do we do a show in Japan reconsidering the way of doing it? So we sent it by train. <laughs> we looked a lot into how to do it. And surprisingly, a lot of people said, no, 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 that's not possible. But it turns out, of course, it was, it was not even difficult. It was even cheaper. And, and on top of that, there was this notion of Maybe we build it locally. Maybe we don't go there to install it. Maybe we change the way we do things altogether. What is my point is, it was actually possible. Even I admittedly thought, well, it's probably not going to be as good as a show because it's so difficult. But it was. It was probably even better because the felt feeling of having achieved an exhibition on the other side of the world with a much less foot, environmental footprint it made the show better. It was a qualitative measure that gave the show agency that it would not have had otherwise. So it took something which was very abstract. I didn't even see it coming. It gave me confidence in an artistic practice where a sense of resp responsibility, a sense of re uh, felt responsibility, you know, ideology maybe, was applied onto action and it was great. And it's unspectacular. I don't mean to talk about achievements here. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about a system where I had not seen this coming. I had not seen that there are ways. It might not be easy, but there are successes that used to be on the other side of the horizon. And suddenly they were tangible on the inside of the horizon. I made a negative space, an untangible space. I made something abstract into something visceral, real, and something about life. Thank you so much for listening to me. I wish you all the best.
，拜拜。